Do you get annoyed when other people say they're going to do things and then they do not back up their words by their actions? Are you sick of people pretending to be virtuous, grandiose personalities in the world, and then you scrape a little bit under the surface and all the darkness starts to come out? Can you see how you yourself say you're going to do things, yet your actions do not back up your virtuous statements? Well, I'm going to pick on Mr. Beast again here because today's reading is a beautiful example of how Mr. Beast says things, puts on a front that he's a wonderful, virtuous, moral person, yet more and more day after day comes out about how he is not that. And obviously the situation is complicated. I don't have all the facts. I'm just picking on him because he's an easy target right now. And clearly his actions are bad, for lack of a better word. They are undesirable. They're kind of gross. And in particular, because he claims to be this amazing man of the people, he wants to help out. He wants to donate to charity. And in fairness to him, he has donated and done a lot for people. So it's not a criticism of that. It's a criticism of the paradox or the contradiction between his behavior, his stated aims, and the shystiness and the reprehensible behavior going on behind the scenes at Mr. Beast's empire. Now, there's plenty of videos going around YouTube that are massively influential in reference to Mr. Beast. And if you haven't seen those, you know, it wouldn't take long for you to find them. I'm sure you found them or maybe come across them. You'll get all the details there. I'm here again to bring our attention to how ancient wisdom, philosophy, moral, ethical, spiritual principles can be applied to these situations. And again, bringing ourself into the picture. Okay. We're not perfect. I'm not perfect. I say things with my mouth that I don't always back up with my actions. That's not really towards other people. I say that mostly for myself in the past, in my past life. No doubt I would say things to people all the time. I would be dishonest, deceitful, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but that's the life of an addict. And uh, luckily I'm not that anymore. Anyhow, uh, this is the Starts With Me channel. I hope you find this helpful. Today, we are reading from Ryan Holiday's Daily Stoic, and it is August 12th, and the reading is Make the Words Your Own. Many words have been spoken by Plato, Zeno, Chrysippus, Poseidonius, and by a whole host of equally excellent Stoics. I'll tell you how people can prove their words to be their own, by putting into practice what they've been preaching. Seneca, Moral Letters, 108.35, semicolon 38. The reading goes on. One of the criticisms of Stoicism by modern translators and teachers is the amount of repetition. Marcus Aurelius, for example, has been dismissed by academics as not being original because his writings, his writing resembles that of other earlier Stoics. The criticism misses the point. Even before Marcus's time, Seneca was well aware that there was a lot of boring and overlap among philosophers. That's because real philosophers weren't concerned with authorship, only what worked. More important, they believed that what was said mattered less than what was done. And this is as true now as it was then. You're welcome to take all of the words of the great philosophers and use them to your own liking. They're dead, they don't mind. Feel free to tweak and edit and improve as you like. Adapt them to the real conditions of the real world. The way to prove that you truly understand what you speak and write, that you truly are original, is to put them into practice. Speak them with your actions more than anything else. Music to my ears. In my email signature, it says, you can't think your way into right action. You have to act your way into right thinking. And that reiterates this idea here. We need to shut our mouths more and let our actions do. And let. I want to try to remind myself 
and everybody that it's in some sense it's it's human nature or it's common practice that people say things that they don't back them up you see it all over politics you see it often in social discourse social commentary you see it in the culture war nonsense where everyone's pointing fingers at everyone else but no one's taking responsibility for their part in it my raison d'être my purpose for these videos and what I try to align myself with is to let my actions do the talking, to try to live in alignment with Stoic, Buddhist, moral, ethical, spiritual principles from all different uh, traditions. They're all really saying the same thing in, in reference to the reading here. The criticism of Stoicism or Marcus Aurelius for being repetitive is ridiculous. As a therapist, none of the content, none of the therapy models, these approaches to psychotherapy are new. They didn't really cultivate any new insights. They're just reframed packages of the wisdom that we've known for thousands of years. There's nothing wrong with that. That's actually wonderful. We do need to update our wisdom. We need to, as it says here, make the words your own. We need to remind ourselves of these wisdoms of these ancient traditions and practices. So make your words your own. In what areas of your life are you saying things that you are not backing up? Are there other people in your life that are saying things and then they do not back them up? And can you get rigorously honest with yourself about that? Let's bring this back into Mr. Beast. He's an easy target right now. Clearly fame got to his head, power got to his head, who knows the full story? We don't know that. But there's many allegations against him for being hard on contestants, for being hard on his employees, for pretending to be loving and caring and behind the scenes not being that. So another clear example is the his candy bar scenario. I've seen these clips where he's being so virtuous about how unhealthy all the candy bars are out there. And suggesting that because his candy bar only has five ingredients in it, it's somehow better. I kind of swallowed the Kool-Aid a lot with Mr. Beast. And it's actually very sad to see all the things that are coming out about him. It's sad. It's disappointing. It's unfortunate. Um, I think many people, including myself, were caught up in the fantasy that it's possible for someone to be this creative, this uh, selfless and philanthropic and really seemingly just kind of like a perfect dude. Uh, no one's perfect, of course, but he really did embody an archetype of admiration that we all would want to aspire to. And then to have all this stuff come out is a little bit crushing on one side. On the other side, it's actually kind of refreshing. Nobody's perfect. There is no, you know, person out there who never makes mistakes, who's always perfect. So it's important to remember that. We want to remind ourselves that there is no perfect deal. There is no perfect scenario. There is no perfect offer. There is no perfect person. And that's quite relieving to know that. Okay. So let's bring it back to ourselves. Okay. How can we make our words our own? How can we integrate the ancient wisdom of philosophers and modern neuroscience and modern therapy and back up our words and our aspirations with our actions. You could, as I've often done, just a simple practice, pull out a piece of paper, put a line down the middle. What are the things that I'm saying I'm going to do? And what are the contradictions in my behavior there? Am I backing up my words with my actions? You could also flip this a little bit if you're in a relationship with somebody where they say a lot of things and they never do it. And either you keep forgiving them, you keep buying the Kool-Aid, or you have a difficulty setting that boundary and not, not putting up with this shit anymore. Uh, so you may want to write out that for somebody else. What are the things that other people say or what is this person promising you, saying they're going to do for you? And then what are they actually doing? Okay, it's a tall order. We're, we're speaking, or I am speaking in, in the realm of ideals. Okay, the Stoic philosophers, these moral, ethical, virtuous principles, they're ideals. They're that way, and we want to 
do our best to live in alignment with these ideals to the best of our ability, to recognize what gets, what gets in the way of us living in alignment with those ideals, and what we might be able to do to reduce our distraction from those ideals or reduce our verging away from those ideals and to kind of reorient ourselves back in that direction. Okay, I hope you found that helpful. Again, please like this video, comment on it, subscribe to the channel, consider supporting us on Patreon. And that's about it. Without further ado, I wish you all the best. Take it easy. Peace out. I am very grateful that you watched to the end of this video. Please click one of the boxes to watch more of our content and otherwise have a great day. Peace out.